All right, so we did number one. Let's tackle the second one. I've already got my, my setup here. I've got exam2.py ready to go. So the second one is write a function called factorial, which um, receives an x and returns x factorial. We know that x is non-negative, so it's 0 or higher. It's an int. And uh, 0 factorial is 1, etc., etc., etc. Two ways to think about factorial. If we're looking for a number factorial, like 5 factorial, we can think of it as 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. So starting at 1, accumulating, multiplying up to 5, or whatever the x is. Um, the other way to think about factorial is that 0 factorial is 1, and then every other number that's bigger than 0, an integer, non-negative integer, is the factorial of n is n times the factorial of the previous number n minus 1. So that's a recursive definition. So let's do it both ways. I'm going to start with recursive definition. So we got factorial. Um, so let's define factorial. And we'll use um, x as the parameter, just like it does in the question. And the recursive, and we can assume x is non as a non-negative integer. You can make these assumptions on an exam as long as it goes along with what I'm allowing you to assume on the exam. Um, remember the exam is we're just trying to check certain points, certain knowledge, certain mastery of topics. Um, we don't need you to write beautiful code. We don't need you to write all these exception handling and extra stuff. We don't want user input and output. We want a quick showing that you know how to do what we're trying to see that you can do. So I'm going to assume that's a non-negative integer. So if x is 0, then we return 1. I could put an else here, but I won't. Um, if x is not 0, we just go to the next line. So I don't need an else. Um, so if that's not true, then I'm, I'll put an else just because I think you guys like it better that way. Let's do return x times. So the recursive definition is it's x times the factorial of the previous x not x times x minus 1. It's factorial of x minus 1. I'll put a space in there so it's easier to see. And that's it, right? So if x is 0, then it's 1. Else it's x times the factorial of the x minus 1. Oops. So let's test it. Let's just print factorial of 5, 4. Okay, fine, 4. I typed a 4. Um, so 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 24. Let's test. Let's run it. Python 3 of exam 2. 24. That looks good. Let's try it with 5. 5, save, run. 120. Excellent. Let's try it with 0. Better make sure that works. 1. We're good. Factorial recursive version. So let's switch to a loop. Remember, we're changing the implementation of the factorial function. We're not actually changing the interface. So the main program, remember this is our main program below here, main program below, um, doesn't need to change because it doesn't need to know how we're doing it. So let's implement this. What we want is an accumulator. And we're doing multiplication. So 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way up to x. So the m identity for multiplication is 1. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to do accumulator is accumulator times some number n, right? We're going to keep doing this, but we're going to do it for n starts at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way to 9, or 9 to x. So Python has a good way of defining these loops. So basically we want for n in range of 1 up to x, um, we want to do this. So we want to start at 1, but we don't really need to do 1 times 1 because pff, that's 1. We might as well just start at 2. And the, the thing with Python here is um, we can put a comment here. This is actually from 2 up into x, where the 2 is inclusive and this is non-inclusive. So 
we actually need to go up to x plus 1 for the loop. So the range is going to go from 2 up to, but not including, x plus 1. The accumulator is accumulator times n, and then we return the accumulator. Got it? So we're doing 1. We already got the 1 in the accumulator, times 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way up to n. Boom, save it. Uh, factorial of 0 should be 1. Factorial of 4 should be 24. And factorial of 5 should be 120. Whoops, I screwed up here. I deleted my extra parentheses. There we go. Cool thing about Python, you can just put big numbers here, like 55. This will explode in my C++ version. But hey, look at that big number. Python's cool support for large numbers. So we did it with loops, and we did it with a recursive definition. That's number two. I'm going to hit the stop button.